Welcome, folks, to That Reminds Us Of, starring me, Doc, and you, Baron. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Welcome, everybody. This is another episode, another special MIF episode. Uh, MIF 68.5 2020 COVID edition. And (laughs) we are talking tonight about the film Exile. It's a German film, I believe, mm. with Have to be, wouldn't it? an Albanian character in the lead. So, yeah. So this was, I think, we chose eight initially, right? This was one of those eight. This was one of those eight. Yep. Yes. And um, what a film. It's a very interesting film. There's a lot to talk about. I think, though, we should start with a synopsis. And I believe, Doc, it is your turn. It's my turn. Okay. Well, Exile is a story about an Albanian man uh, living in Germany with his German wife and family. He he works for a company. What do they do? Uh, like a, they're bioengineers, I think. Something like that. Bioengineers. That'll do. Not all that important. Um, and he basically is always feeling left out and bullied. Things like uh, his colleagues leave, leave him off their group email list. One colleague in particular, he really feels like is has got it in for him he gets little microaggression things like uh in the workplace yes but also in his home with rats in his mailbox and he's wondering who's who's doing this to him assuming it's this one this one colleague um he confronts the colleague on several occasions uh with increasing intensity which ends up getting violent um he even suspects that his wife's having an affair uh, just because she, um, or because he found that the toilet seat was was up, uh, so it, it that's there's not much plot line other than just viewing this man having a hard time of it, feeling put down, and he he puts it all down to the fact that he's a foreigner, he's an Albanian man in a German context, and everything is is viewed through that lens. Uh, I think. I think we need a spoiler in this synopsis. Am I allowed a spoiler? Yeah. Okay. So let's <clears throat> let's or get into want, that. Do you want to stop there? This film requires us to go go into some spoilers, I believe. So, mm. audience, spoiler alert: we will be spoiling the hell out of this film at different points because of the kind of film it is. I think. So go for <laughs> it, Doc. Well, basically, that's the setup, and then towards the very end of the film, it's it's quite a long, drawn out process, but. Towards the end, all of these perceived, you know, insults to him, uh, there there ends up being quite reasonable explanations for most of them. And in 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 many cases, he's the wanker that has put other people out. Uh, so that's the film, to in to my mind. I totally you, agree. Anything to add? Yeah, um, <clears throat> no, I think that's that is the film. Uh, the real, the the bit that saves this film for me is what you're talking about. Mm. The very end, you've gone on this long, fraught journey of (laughs) perceived insults and bullying and some pretty nasty stuff, right? And you you're kind of sure that he's that that maybe this is all happening, Mm. and then at the very end, the whole thing flips on its head, and you realize that that actually you know, he's the one who's been harassing everybody and that there's, you know, these things are Mm. either imagined or they're a result of an, of something else that's totally unrelated uh, or they, they fall down to this one moment that happens early in the film and has Mm. nothing even to do with all of his work colleagues or racism or the fact that he's a foreigner. It's just because he's a dick sometimes. And that's, (laughs) that's why all this stuff's happened. I, yeah. I, I thought that was the redeeming feature of this film, that it pulls that, it, you know, it pays off that in such a great way. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to say just to, just to manufacture some tension between us, because often we agree with each other, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to say off the bat that I really liked it. It wasn't flawless, but I, for the most part, I really liked it. And I'm sensing that you weren't quite as optimistic. I wanted to throw my pen and my cup at the <laughs> monitor 
over and over again during this film. Yeah. It just pissed me off so many times. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Like, all all due respect to the filmmaker, it is a well crafted film. Yeah. I just, I just the story, the story, and how long it took to unravel just really, really bugged me. Really yeah. was hard to watch. I, I, I struggled with this film from the outset, or did it kind of? Did you, did you give it a go for a little while, and then at, at a certain point it lost you? I gave it. I reckon there was five to or so minutes of good faith, and then I started mm. getting annoyed. Little by little, <laughs> and then 20, 30 minutes in, I was very annoyed. Yeah. An hour in, I was like, "Please do something! You're killing yep. me." Um, and then, I would say it's about cause it's a it's a two hour film. I'd say about sort of uh, 70, 80 minutes in, you get the turning point of um, this character Urs Urs, who's sort of been mm. the bully, the one who's yeah. been who's been the most sort of against our main character, uh, Jeffer. Jeffer, yeah. am I saying that right? Um, yep. He, well, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying You don't right. know, but that's that, having <laughs> but seen the I film know. and listened to it about 30 times in the film, I feel like I should be able to say it. <laughs> well, this is, this is the irony because part of the film is him saying his name to everyone and no he has to repeat it. it. He has to repeat it to everybody. <laughs> and that's one of the things that makes him feel... Uh, maligned and isolated and yeah you know uh which that that is the real experience of, yes of people so i i enjoyed Look, that in that way anyway i was i was about to say earth yeah. earth has enough of life <laughs> tops himself <laughs> right yeah and that's when the that's when the film becomes interesting to me mm. it took a turn the pace shifted and i was able to sit up a little bit and go oh thank god something's happening you know what i mean mm. Um, even though it's wrong to say nothing happened before that, it just felt to me like, you know, the way sometimes when you're talking to a child and they're telling you a story and they're like, and then <laughs> this happened. And then I went to the shop and I couldn't uh, get the lolly I wanted. And then I went home and uh, I found that my cushion wasn't in the right place on the couch. And then I went to bed and my teddy wasn't where I expected it to be. It just sort of felt like that kind of storytelling and you've got this kind of petulant child just going from scene to scene getting annoyed at everything <laughs> but that's that's uh, that's spot on but <laughs> i like that because this is this is a this is a man he's a very manly you know uh, very manly bloke and he is acting like a little spoilt kid all all through just getting all sooky and i like i like that but it was is not the not the portrayal you often see but it was very childlike but to see a, a grown man play that it's was... true and completely understandable like i i can yeah. imagine anybody getting into that downward spiral that he gets in spiral that he gets into like it totally makes sense completely. isn't it funny yeah. like the thing that annoyed me about the film mm. is probably the filmmaker's intention and the thing they intentionally set out to do yeah well and on that note to the the fact that it was played so so slow, so frustratingly slow through so much of it, I, I felt that that built to the climactic things happening later having more impact. Yes. So I, I, I really, really appreciated that. It, it felt very much going again. I, I often go into what it reminds me of too soon, but the, the myth um, description of it referenced... Hannah Kay, um, and also Ruben Ostland, mm. um, who are just two of my all-time favourites, both both directors. But it, it it played very slow, like a Hannah Kay film. I was I was thinking of Hannah Kay while I was watching it as well. Yeah, not. I don't think you you can expect anyone to get to the level of some of some of his stuff because I'm a big fan, so I wouldn't put it in the same class. But I it I still thought it was well well delivered i think haneke yes I, I think he plays his his film slow intentionally and mm. his shots long and slow but his stories have mm. uh have more of a climax and they have they hit those beats more definitively whereas yeah. this feels like um we have one big twist at the end and the whole film is a slow burn up to that 
you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, although the, you know, the probably my favourite part of the film, uh, spoiler alert again, but hardly need to say that, is the last, literally the last scene. Do you remember it? Um, he, wh- one of the things that was annoying him all through was his uh, mother-in-law, mother-in-law's attitude towards him. Yes. And the, it's a through line of the of the whole film where he wants, if he's going to go to her party, her birthday party, he wants her to stand up in front of everyone and announce that he's um, uh, her favourite son-in-law. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it was great. Uh, uh, what, 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 he wanted her to say, because he know, he's, he's aware that she's also racist, right? And he wants her, he wanted her to say something like, this is my son-in-law um, who basically she's accepted that he's a dirty foreigner and she's quite happy <laughs> something like that to be for him to be part of the family now <laughs> like yeah yeah it's, and he was hung up on this idea this is he probably was. one of the most interesting things about the film for me was that we have a film where all of the cast is white pretty much like you're just mm-hmm. looking at a bunch of white people that's what it looks yes. like right yeah but there's but there is racism in there because yeah. the germans are not fond of the eastern europeans and in a world that just is so focused on uh, Black Lives Matter and mm-hmm. um, you know other issues of race at the moment. I, I think this is a really interesting comment to put it to throw in the middle there. That sometimes you know racial tensions aren't very obvious. Like sometimes you've got mm. two people that look pretty pretty white, you know, and there's there's a problem with racism there. Yeah, but but what's even more explosive is the fact that it's depicting what we're all taking as as racism throughout and and some things probably objectively are but by the end of it it undercuts all of that and almost diminishes that point you're that true it's that's true yeah um so i didn't know what to take from that like it's i think it's just uh i like the complexity of it that you know even though i would probably rather it there be a, a strong comment on the racist stuff I kind of liked that they they looked at it as a more complex issue. Yeah. I think you know what I think you can take it both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can you can you can totally buy into the the issues of race there that are real. Yeah. But then at the end you can also say well, it turns out that what he was most concerned about had nothing to do with race. It wasn't even a, an issue. And mm-hmm that that's just as likely to happen in the world, yeah, you know? Yeah. And when you're so focused on uh, the fact that you're a foreigner and there's racism in the community around you, you might perceive everything as racist yeah. when sometimes it's something completely different. So it's, 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 you're right, that's a very interesting comment in itself that the filmmaker's making. But it's so relatable, his experience. I think everyone has had some instance of feeling like they're, you know, on the outer or like, what am I, what am I missing? Why wasn't I included or, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's a, there's a real message. Like this is perhaps too close to the surface to even talk about, but there's a real message and moral that not to think the world is against you. Uh, and that's, I think what he might've learned by the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the wife lays it out, right? You know, mm. you're, you're so concerned with all these other things when actually it's not that. You're just an mm. asshole. You're just an yeah. asshole. You know, like that. <laughs> it's, it's great. You know, <laughs> have you ever thought that maybe you're just a dick? And that's what it's all about. And that's what he is. Yeah, he is. Because he's the one that he was cheating on his wife, which <laughs> yeah, was the reason for the rats in his letterbox. Like that's. That's beautiful in itself. It is beautiful. It's beautiful. It has nothing to do with his office. He's cheating on his wife. That's what's caused this whole thing to unravel and to happen yeah. around him. I love it. And, of course, he's concerned that his wife is cheating on him, which is just the way these things go, right? Yeah, the, I think the guilty conscience. Yes. Um, uh, and that was great, perfectly reasonable explanation for it, which was which was good. Yeah. I was getting, oh, sorry, go. I, look, I I was just going to say that I think there are lots of elements of this film mm. that are really great. Lots of themes, lots of little ideas. Uh, I just wish that we had sort of more of a plot 
and some more twists and turns throughout to, to take mm. us from one idea to the next. You see, that's what I was looking for in Shirley, which was the last film. And you loved Shirley, and I was lukewarm about it. And we've swi- we switched here, but yeah, we have. You know, what, what what was it about Shirley that made you go? Because I got lost in the meandering of that one. Really, but I See, was I was just spellbound by the uh, you know the, the little micro moments of of ex- exile. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, we just have slightly different tastes in these sorts of films mm. in terms of how the um the plot moves forward. I, I I think I was look I was quite enjoyed the twists and turns and the and the sort of upping of conflict and mm. tension in Shirley. I I enjoyed that. Uh, whereas this is for me, I found to be a much straighter line. And actually, you loved um, uh, the killing of two lovers as well, which has a similar. Yeah. It has a similar structure. It's a, it's almost a straight line from the beginning to the climax in terms of tension building. Yeah. Whereas and I I think I'm more of a I like I like peaks and troughs, you know. Yeah, and there's much much more solo journeys perhaps in both the killing of two lovers and exile. It's you're inside inside this one guy's head. Yeah. For for the duration in both of them, whereas in Shirley, even though you've got Shirley as the main character, Rose is this sort of another main character. It's very much about the the relationship and. And it's bigger than just one consciousness. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's interesting. And so did you have any uh, standout remind me ofs for this film? Uh, well, the, the standouts, well, yeah, two or three. Um, firstly, just in the opening, I was thinking Blue Velvet. Uh, Blue Velvet has a very distinct opening, if I remember it right. The the world is is vibrant in color it's almost truman show style perfect and then uh kyle mclaughlin um finds a a human ear you know in the middle of this <laughs> beautiful right. beautiful scene uh so i thought the 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 start of this where he's walking through a, a really beautiful pristine german street it almost looks too perfect yes and then in amongst the perfection there's the the rat uh, on the on his door, um, so that just in this in a setup, I li- I like that. And in yeah, that was Blue a, Velvet. that was a strong opening moment. It mm. definitely gets you wondering where where this film's going to go and what you know. Just a dead rat hanging off of his fence. I think it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's impactful. Yeah. Uh, actually, one thing we haven't talked about. And yep. I think you've you sort of mentioned it a little bit here, just in the, the setup and the feeling of the film, mm. is that um, there's some sort of weird heat wave going on in this film. Do you notice that he's just is like it... pouring sweat the entire way through the film? He's just What's constantly dripping sweat. His collar is soaked. His armpits have got giant rings around them. Uh, he's just got beads coming down his forehead, right? Mm. And there's not a single mention of it. I found no, that odd no too. No character mentions that there's a, oh, we're in a heat wave. You know, oh, I wish the air con was working. <laughs> None of that. None of yeah. that. He's just going from place to place, sweating profusely. I found that really interesting and also uh, just slightly odd that it was never mentioned, never nodded to. Mm. I had exactly the same reaction. I thought it worked really well to up the temperature, dare I say, of the <laughs> of the work environment in particular. Uh, uh, yeah, because everything felt uncomfortable in that place, and that just just added to it. So it was a great device, but it was really odd that there was nothing to mention the heat wave or the fact that you know Germany's run out of air conditioners, or and suddenly they're back to nineteen seventies fans for everywhere for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Maybe maybe it's not um, necessarily normal in Germany for workplaces to be air conditioned who knows really odd and that whole workplace had a sort of (laughs) um you know primary school 70s plastic chair vibe to it like it it, you know really odd Mm. odd setting and everyone was wearing beige short sleeve shirts you know tucked in with a tie and stuff and just you know it just felt like we were in a different time but then they went home he went back to his street completely modern house 
modern cars. There's some interesting choices there. I, I did really enjoy the cinematography. I think uh, there were some great clever choices about putting him, making him small in the frame, mm. uh, shooting through things so that he's always in like a crowded frame and uh, making of this world a sense of claustrophobia. Like every meeting he's in, he's got like yeah. 30 sweating it's, Germans like all yeah. around him and <laughs> all the fans like whirring at once and... Like it had all that stuff. It's great. Like they did an awesome job of that. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Um, it's a good point you make about it feeling like, like school, like it felt, it felt like primary school. Yeah. Didn't it? And that, that ties in with the fact that he is behaving like a child. So I don't know that that's meant to be an overt reference, but you can certainly read it like this is a schoolyard with all the bullying and teasing and, you know, Mr. Ne- Mr. Meaners that go on there. Absolutely. And even the fact that they he goes into this sort of school-style cubicle bathroom yeah, a bunch of times and just like there's this idea of <laughs> sitting in a stall because there's bullies around and you just want to get no. to your, some space by yourself, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. No, I think that, that that's that's clever. I, I don't I, – I wonder how intentional all that is, but I'm going to say it probably is and it, it works. I'm going to say it's intentional. Like it, yep. it felt like he was going to the principal's office several times mm-hmm. and, you know, waiting outside the office for detention. Absolutely. And his mate who locks himself in the toilet and says, you know, I'm not coming out, I'm not coming out. Um, <laughs> it's cool. Maybe maybe by the time we finish this, you might um, change your mind about the film. There are definitely <laughs> ideas in here that I love and there's some execution that I love. So uh, I'm, I'm not all against it. I definitely won't be seeing it again and I won't recommend it to to either to watch. <laughs> but, um, you know, the thing about this festival yeah, and about doing these, these episodes on each of these films, I feel like I am learning so much. It feels like I've gone back to film school, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because each of the film takes, each of these films takes risks in a way that you don't see in your standard Hollywood film. Mm. And whether it's successful or not, there's something to take away from that. You just there's just so many yeah. ideas in each of these films. I think that's what it is. That's so true, and that's fun to talk yeah. about, isn't it? It's great, and it makes me think that we should all be doing this more often. You know, the more we sit down and watch just regular old, um, whatever A grade premium streaming, <laughs> you know, content plus yeah. Marvel blockbusters the dumber and less creative we're going to get. You know what we, I mean? We, we die a little with every one, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. And they're great films. They're entertaining, but they don't bring anything fresh that's yeah. going to challenge you. And all of these films have been challenging. T- tell me about any scenes in this film that you actually, that stuck with you, you really liked. Have you got any, any killers that we haven't mentioned? Um, I enjoyed the... The whole uh, sequence where he's sitting at his desk and you're watching the other Albanian character mm. who's a woman, who's a cleaning lady at the company, mm. slowly cleaning her way around the office closer to his desk <laughs> yeah. until she's until she cleans one item on his desk and he's ignoring her the entire yeah. time, just pretending she's not even there. Hard cut to the two of them screwing <laughs> in the toilets like... <laughs> And it's just sw- it just sweat pouring down her back. It's basically yeah. just a a close up of her back with his hairy arms around her and just sweat, and yeah. um, it's just brilliant. I just thought that was great. That was that was great. And that's their relationship the whole way through the film. He ignores her most mm. of the time and treats her like an absolute nuisance. But you know that they're they're having lots of these, you know, yeah. screw sessions. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that. That's that's really good, and that pays off too, doesn't it? In the end, it turns out to be the crux of the whole film, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the rats was an interesting choice. Uh, he's he works in a lab. I guess it's mm. kind of lab, even though he's kind of a pencil pusher. Yeah, and uh, he's got this this fear of rats, this deep fear of rats, and uh, somehow the 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 bully which turns out i mean should we just spoil this i think we we've already pretty yeah, much done we've it we've already spoiled it yeah completely. so the son which is of the albanian cleaner 
has mm. caught him early on in the film with with the mother, right? With the, with the cleaner. He's so the sons caught them, and the whole every every event that happens with the rats and the burning of the pram out the front of his house and all of this stuff that goes on is all the son that's just yeah. uh, doing this. And I don't know how he's discovered that he that that uh, Jeffer has like a a full on fear phobia of rats, but he has. Well, and, maybe he doesn't have to know. It's just a a thing to do. Yeah, like a, and he, has, he had, had access to them. That's probably all it was. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Because the cleaning lady is getting rid of these things, right? These rats mm. with the boxes. So, yeah, he's got a bunch of dead rats. What what a great thing to <laughs> to prank someone with. Uh, the other thing I think I really enjoyed um, is that this fear of the rats turns into a physical thing with his wife, where he can just he will wake up yes. with night terrors and yeah, just start yeah. trying to strangle her to death. That was interesting. Yeah, that was freaky, wasn't it? Really was a full on moment. Yeah, yeah. He he's, he actually strangles her. Just strangles yeah. her. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's I a really... messed up character. There's not much to like about him. Did you like him at all? Like he's not a likable character. I thought. No, no, he wasn't likable. But you still, you still felt for him, didn't you? Like I think still... I felt for his confusion and his sort yeah. of displacement and his his anxiety. I felt for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was on his side, but I was, if I was to make a criticism, I'd say that sometimes his actions didn't quite make sense. Like it seemed like he could, he could deal with these things just more um, sensibly, uh, rather than go straight into putting a fork in, <laughs> almost putting a fork into the guy's eye. Uh, yeah, you know, like a step, a step between being. Um, in in a turmoil and and just thinking about this within yourself and nearly uh, like attacking him, like he, he there should be a step between there, um, which just some sometimes frustrated me and and I didn't quite think it was believable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have a reminds me of for this uh, shame. Have you seen shame? Shame. Have I? Can you talk about it a little? And it's I'll... got F- Michael Fassbender in it. I love Michael Fassbender. He's great, and this is a great film. He's got a he's got a uh, sex addi- addiction, and he's just um, ah yes dealing with this full on sex ad- ad- why can I say addiction tonight? I can't say it anyway. The ho- <laughs> the whole way through the film, he's dealing with this thing, and it has that same inner kind of boiling up of emotions, mm-hmm. and he's he's trying to keep this cool facade, but you can see it's all unraveling un- underneath. Yeah. And he's kind of storming from one place to the next, you know, trying to deal with things without exploding. That that's that really reminded me of this film quite yeah. quite a lot. I think I have seen that. Uh, I had another one, which was um, I mentioned Ruben Ostland before, uh, who directed Force Majeure. Um, but the yeah, the what one a great film. I think in general the filmmaking reminded me of of his stuff. But the one I'd reference is Involuntary, uh, which is all about little... um, uh, The difficulty with humans interpreting situations and, you know, how to deal with just personal interactions and and all the room for error and misinterpretation. And I just... What I loved about Involuntary was just how micro... it, It doesn't... The film doesn't tell you how to, what to think about something. It just, like, there's a scene, for example, where someone um, they're they're playing with firecrackers, and someone gets injured, and it, the firecracker sort of goes into this guy's eye, and he's at a party, and everyone's wondering, like, is this a, is this a massive thing? Is this like, is he going to die? Is he going to be blind? Or is mm. this just something that's a little bit funny? Um, and you know, <laughs> yeah. look, he got it in his eye. Yeah, and and a similar scene when there's a a virtual sexual assault by a a group of mates on one of their mate, and again, you're just not sure how to weigh up the you know the situation. And I this made that. me this made me feel like that. Like he's 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 having things happen to him, and I'm just thinking, is that is that a a real big thing that 
you know has happened against him or is he blowing it out of proportion um yes and each of the things are easily discountable in a way and they are by his wife and by the others yeah. around him and yet you totally understand how all those things stacked on top of each other would feel like the world was out to get you mm. and, yeah. but at the end of it you don't you're torn between is this a nothing or is this a major thing and therefore how do you act how do you navigate that do you explode or do you keep it to yourself yeah um which is maybe maybe that explains my criticism before about him going from zero to bloody 20 because he's he's in between these two you know, yeah i didn't uh, i didn't mind that about him because i i i that felt believable he is a sort of masculine uh competent manly character mm. you know who you imagine in the past was very confident in his place in the world. In and Albania, he would have yeah. been... He would have been a semi-king, the, right? Just top of the strutting tree. around. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's right. Making good money, great job, strutting around, well-built, good-looking dude, mm. you know. Um, and- he would have been an absolute prick. You <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and in this, suddenly he's just uh, in really deep waters and doesn't know how to deal with any of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I was I was going to mention earlier the the ending. I I really 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 dug the ending. Uh, it's he's on his way. Like he's he's just realised that all of these um, things that he thought were slights against him, you know, were basically his fault, and he's on his way to the his um, mother in law's party, and he's standing. He realizes it's a surprise party, so they won't let him in. And he's standing by the curtain, basically then waiting for them to yell surprise so that he can go in and join the party. Yeah, that's right. And he's standing there and I'm saying, please just end it on this. Please end it on this. This is beautiful. And they they hold it and they hold it and they hold it. And you keep thinking that there's going to be a resolution that, you know, finally it's going to be like the pressure is going to be released. Yeah, but then they stop. They never, they never have the party start. No, they don't. <clears throat> and you get a sense. Well, I had a really strong sense that he was just walking into another shit show, where he was going to mm-hmm. be out in deep waters. Still, you know, like I, I had a real sense that there is no resolution to this. And in mm-hmm. fact, the the fact that he's learnt that all of the bullying was because he'd been, you know, screwing around with this kid's mum, and <laughs> had nothing to do with racism. And that he had then gone ahead and, you know, somehow pushed a man to commit suicide, just pushing yeah. that a little bit extra. I just thought, this guy's, where, where can he possibly go from here? You know, he's done. He's cooked. Um, and mm. I don't know. I, I think what I was waiting for in this film, and this is sort of getting to it. Yeah. I was waiting for him to explode. And he never does. I think that's what, it, what, what got to me in the end. Mm. I wanted the man to go all joker on us, you know, and just explode or do something, do something unexpected and wild. And even right up to the end, he's just holding everything bottled up, which he yeah. might love, you know. And But for me, I just I just wanted that release. Yeah, I did love it. But no, I, I definitely wanted the release. I felt we, I thought we got it in that scene when he physically attacked Urs. And, yeah. you know, um, gets him up against the wall and gets the fork to his eye. I, I felt that was the explosion. And the beauty of it then was that just after the explosion, that's when he realised that he had no right to explode. So there's, you're left with this sense of regret and, and, um, and everything being unresolved, which completely plays out in the end. It's the epitome of being unresolved you don't even get the surprise party started <laughs> exactly and i thought to leave you with that knot in your stomach uh was really I, I really liked it it does it does do that um it's the anti-ending almost mm. i i i wanted him to explode and that moment with urs with the mm. fork 
felt like the beginning. Maybe, yeah. yes, yeah, maybe it's going to happen. And then, and then they pull back and it, and it doesn't. So I think that, that just, that killed me a little bit inside. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was a problem for me. Look, look, it killed me too. I didn't, I didn't enjoy the fact that we didn't get the explosion. Yeah. But I, I respected liked it. it. I respected yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Okay. Well, I have nothing else to add about this film. I think that it's um, it's really really challenging. Mm. I don't I don't hate it. Like I just I I just don't I didn't enjoy it. There's a lot of really cool ideas in it, uh, yeah. but overall, it just it, I found it hard to watch. I I agreed with most of your you know complaints, but I overall loved it. It's in it's in the top half of of my films for this for this festival cool. not 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 the best one but it's it's in the top top it's few. up there yeah mm. okay cool awesome well that concludes this little batch of films i think next we're going to be watching the closing night film am i correct emma yes and we've got one more i think don't we after um, that yep. yeah yeah so there's a couple great to little... go and then we'll back return to normal programming that's right. Back to our <laughs> probably more mainstream, uh, probably more entertaining programming for a little bit. <laughs> Which, uh, look, I, as much as I've loved Myth, I'm looking forward to that as well. <laughs> you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think I'll really appreciate some, yeah, some mainstream. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Great cool. stuff. Well, I'll... catch you in the next one, Doc. See you next time, Baron. <laughs> <laughs>